you have your Bibles, turn with me to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. I want to talk to you tonight about no fear. No fear. And uh, fear can mean false evidence appearing real. Okay? And uh, I think we all know where fear comes from. Uh, I meant to get it on the piece of paper, but it's not. Uh, if you have a pen, just write, jot this down. 2 Timothy 1 7. 2 Timothy 1 7. The Bible says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear. Okay? And if God hasn't given this to us, we know who does. Okay? Satan, I believe, biggest tool to harass Christians is fear. Is fear. And there's all kinds of fears. Uh, you know, that people are afraid of. Uh, but notice what the Word says, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. And of course, power is the Holy Spirit power. I'm telling you, with the Spirit of God, we should not fear uh, anything. Of love, the love that God has for us and the love that we have for Him. And a sound mind is not just logic, okay? It's knowing what's real and what is not real. Okay, being sound, uh, sound in doctrine. Father, thank you for the night, and God, I thank you that we have nothing to fear. And Lord, I know it's easy to say, uh, but even attached to fear is worry. And God, I pray that you would just help us as Christians not to fear anything. And God, I just pray you be with this Bible study, and thank you for the promises that you give us. Uh, God, your word is yes, it's amen, it is truth. Uh, so, God, as we look at this scripture, God, I pray that you would just use it really to stir our hearts and help us uh, to be reminded that we have nothing to fear. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You have an outline there. Uh, number one, no fear. God's purpose. Okay, one of, one of the things he has. Folks, God has a purpose for everything. Number two, God's protection. If you want to be protected, I don't know anybody better to protect you than God. Okay, and I understand security guards and bodyguards. Of course, hopefully we don't have any, you know, have to have any of those. But God protects us. And number three, God's power. Folks, there is no stronger power than God. Okay, no stronger power. So let's look at this, no fear. And number one, God's purpose. Romans 8, 28, and we know, okay? I like the word know there. That, that means we are certain, okay? That all things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. We quote this all the time. We hear it in most funerals. Uh, we, we have memorized it. Most of us could quote this uh, verbatim. But it's one thing to quote a scripture, and it's another thing to live a scripture. Okay, so we know all things, good and bad. All right? Because I'm just telling you, folks, God allows some things in our lives to make us stronger, to, uh, so we, and, and to drive us into our prayer closets, to teach us biblical lessons. Uh, to strengthen our faith. There's all kinds of reasons. And, uh, you know, you, you just look at the Apostle Paul's life and you think of everything that went wrong in his life, but yet he rose above those things. For we know all things work together for good to those who love God. And folks, uh, if you're a Christian, you love God. And I, I, there's no doubt in my mind, everybody here tonight on a Wednesday night, they love God. And then there's just sometimes what I call is just life, right? This word that we don't like to say, I, know, I actually know people that will not say, they'll say the C word, all right? And it's cancer. And folks, I'm just telling you, my opinion is it's probably food-oriented, okay? You think of the pesticides, you think of all uh, the steroids, you know, they do in chickens and all this, uh, you know, and I've heard a stat, one of that are, Every four people in America has cancer. But with God, folks, we don't have anything to worry about. For all things work together for good to 
of those who love God and who are called according to his purpose. And I believe, in, and I know this sounds simple, but I believe there's two things that it, 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 it is for. The purpose is for our good. That's the first purpose. That's what, I mean, that's literally what the verse says. Even though we don't like it, even though we wouldn't choose it, it's for our good. And the second one, and I believe this is even more important, for his glory. For his glory. And when you think of the word testimony, what does it take to have a testimony? T-E-S-T. -E a test. All right. And I do believe, uh, Lord, God never tempts us. That's Satan's job. But he does test us. He does, I believe. Then verse 29, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed into the image of his son. Okay? He called us. He knew. And we don't, we don't really have, we'll talk about predestination, but not, not in depth here. Basically, he chose you. All right? He chose you. We didn't choose him. He came to us. Yes, we have the choice. Okay, we did not have to accept Christ, uh, but in God's foreknowledge, he knew who would and who wouldn't. You know, it wasn't a random thing, folks. He didn't say, you're going to be saved, you're going to be saved, you're going to be lost, you're going to be lost, you're going to be lost. He knows us. And here's the part I wanted you to see, the word conformed to the image of his son. You know, the third thing about, uh, you know, all things work together for good? So we will be more like Jesus. Okay? Folks, we all need perfection. We all need to learn. We all need to, you know, to be more like Jesus. I mean, you know, there's usually several areas that we are like Jesus in. But folks, we're still a work in progress. We're a work in progress. So those are three of the reasons why and, and I won't even say this, why bad things happen to good people, all right? Uh, and, and this is what the Word is saying, that he might be firstborn among the many brethren. Hold your finger there and go to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians 1, talking about predestination. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Folks, we are blessed. We are a blessed people. We are a blessed church who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. So everything we need, everything we need not to survive, folks, we were not put here to survive. We were put here to thrive. We were put here uh, as a blessing. We are God's ambassadors. We are his representatives. And it says, just as he chose us in him before the foundations of the world. Folks, I am telling you, it's God. It is God who chose us, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. And that's what that, con you know, conforming to the in image of Christ. No, we will not be perfect. As long as we are in these bodies, as long as we have these minds, we will not be perfect. But it makes us, and it helps us to be more like Jesus. Having predestined us, to the adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to him, according to the good pleasures of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, which he made us accepted in the beloved. He not only saved us, folks, I'm telling you, uh, he, he chose us. And uh, the, the rest of that, verse 30, look, look, back in our, look back in Romans 8. Moreover, whom he predestined, he called. That is the call of salvation. Folks, we hear the word of God. It takes two things to be saved. We hear the word of God, and then the Holy Spirit uh, calls us. It pricks our hearts. So whom he called, he has justified. We are justified through Jesus Christ. We are made right with God by him and by his blood. And whom he justified, he also glorified. Folks, I am telling you, it is God. Salvation is God. All right? And I, I understand we, sh we have the choice, but God knew us even before 
He created us. Even more, before the foundations of the, the, of the earth, He chose us as Christians. Now, I want to answer that question. Why do bad things happen to good people? Turn with me to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. Man, when you're going through these hard times, folks, I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is there. He is called the Comforter, okay? He never leaves us. He never forsakes us, all right? And it says, who comforts us in all our tribulations. Folks, we're going to have tribulations. We're going to have problems. We're going to have troubles, okay? Uh, it could be a health issue, a health issue. There are a lot of things. It could be a financial issue. It could be a family issue. It could be lots of things in our tribulations that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble. Why does he allow this to happen? So that we can in turn help those that are going through the same thing we have already went through as Christians. It's real easy for me when I go to a hospital and I visit a cancer patient. And here's what I say. I say, listen, I know what you're going through because I had cancer when I was 30 years old. Okay? I had two incisions. I had two skin grafts and I had radiation, okay? And it, I, I'm just telling you folks, I can see the ease on their face when I say that. And God has brought me through it, okay? 30 years old, 35 years later, I still have the scars, but I'm telling you, God has healed me. I am cancer-free. With the comfort with which ourselves, we are comforted by God. God comforted us. Okay, and you're always, when you, when you hear that, the first thing you think of, at least in my experience, is why. Okay, I, I was a youth minister. Our youth ministries was thriving, and boom, I got cancer. All right, and again, you know, I, I, I've really thought this through, my, my illness that's been going on, and I really believe God was trying to slow me down so that he could uh, use me and and you know, I, I've, I've had to make adjustments uh, in my studies. I've had to make adjustments in my prayer life. And I've had to make adjustments even in our preaching schedule. And I do believe when I fully come out of this, I am going to be a better pastor and a better person because of what I went through. All right? Verse 5, for as the suffering of Christ abounds in us, so our consolation also abounds through Christ. Folks, Jesus suffered. You, you just think. Man, he didn't have a home. The Bible says he didn't have a place to lay his head. He was called names. He was, he, you know, I mean, there were always people after him. He suffered while he was here. Now, if we are afflicted, it is uh, for your consolation and salvation, which is effective for enduring the same sufferings, which we all suffer. What's he talking about? He's talking about us as Christians. He's saying, when somebody sees you rising above these things and not getting down and not throwing in the towel, they're going to ask you, why are you so calm about this? Why aren't you upset about this news? And I'm telling you, boom, you can lower it right there. You can you start the gospel presentation right there because God is on my side, because God's going to walk me all the way through this. And folks, the biggest, biggest fear Anyone, every, every survey that I've ever seen, the biggest fear is death. And I'm telling you, we as Christians should not fear death. To be absent from the body is to be present uh, with the Lord. And I'm telling you, I believe angels are going to come down and take your soul straight to heaven. So the Holy Spirit comforts us. Jesus suffered. Paul suffered. Peter suffered. Jails, beaten, stoned, shipwrecked. They, they suffered, but it was for the glory of God. In verse 7, and our hope for you is steadfast because we know that as you are partakers in these sufferings, so also you will partake in the consolation. And folks, I'm just telling you, uh, you know, 
when it's all said and done, we're going to heaven. We're going to spend an eternity in a perfect place. And so here, God has a purpose in suffering. And we should not fear, even death, folks, we should not fear. Number two, God's protection. God's protection. Look at verse 30, uh, 31. What shall we say then to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Well, we know who's against us. All right, Satan, he opposes us every day of our lives. Who is our team captain? Who is our team leader? Who is in control of all things in our life? It is God. God is for us. He's not only for us, he is with us. He is not only with us, he is in us. All right? Man, that should, make, that should help you understand that the Satan cannot touch you. All right? He can't. It's just like Job's deal. Remember the conversation God had with Satan? He said, you can do anything you want, but one thing you cannot do, you can't kill the man. All right? And so, folks, I am, I'm just telling you, God had confidence in Job. All that he went through, all that he lost, but yet he said, naked I came into the world and naked I'm going out. What? Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm just telling you, you know, and even Job's wife said, man, you just, you look awful. You got bulls all over you. You need to curse God and die is what you need to do. Folks, God was protecting him because Satan, I'm telling you, would have took him out in a heartbeat. Look at verse 32. And he who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? What did God give us? His absolute best. His absolute best. What does God want for us? His absolute best. He gave his son, Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you, Jesus lived a perfect life here. Jesus overcame any temptations in life. Jesus was the perfect son of God. And I understand you're not going to be there, but I promise you, he is protecting you. He is watching over you. He is for you. He is with you. He is in you. How will he not give us all things? I hope you understand as a Christian, you have everything at your disposal that God has. We are children of God. Our God's a king. Everything the Bible teaches us, all the promises that are in the Bible are yes and amen, and they are true. They are for us. And then he gets real uh, uh, specific here in verse 33. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? We know the answer to that question. What's, what's Satan that? What does he do? Uh, you know, sometimes he's talking to God saying, hey, hey, have you seen my Franklin lady? You see what your preacher did? Did you see what he did today? All right? And folks, even when he accuses us, God defends us. Yeah, I, I can hear conversation. You know, every once in a while, he's just a knucklehead. He, he just, I, he don't make the right decision every time. Now, you give him long enough, he'll make the right decision. All right? But I'm just telling you, Satan is the accuser. And then it says, and it is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? It is Christ who died. And furthermore, is also risen who even is at the right hand of God, making intercession for us. Think about that. Jesus prays for you. Jesus is on your side. So we got God in heaven looking down over us. We got Jesus' life as an example of what we, we uh, uh, should be. Both of them are protecting us, and then we have the seal of the Holy Spirit uh, around us. The promise is around us. The, the dunamis, that Holy Spirit is, of God is inside of us. So what should we fear? He protects us 24-7, 365. And I know, you know, when, when kids are little, you know, a lot of times they're afraid of the dark. 
And I'm, you know, if you need a night light, you know, you, you know, now I need a light, light, night light. I'm grown and I need to see it so I can go to the bathroom about halfway through the night. Can I get an amen here? But we should not fear, folks. We should not fear the dark or anything. He is interceding for us. Now look at this, verse 35. No, no, verse, verse 34. Who is even at the right hand of God who makes intercession for us. Hebrews 13, 5. Hebrews 13, 5. What does it say? It says, let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things that you have. Folks, we are blessed. All right, don't dwell on what you don't have. Dwell on what you have, on what you have. For he, he himself has said, this is God himself, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. I don't care if you're a single person, a widow, a shut-in, live by yourself, you are never alone. Never. And yeah, if you want a burglar alarm, if you want to put alarms on things, you know, I, I'm not saying you should, but, but I'm telling you we should not live in fear because God never leaves us. Psalm 46. Psalm 46. The Bible says in Psalm 46, God is our refuge and strength. He is he very a very present in help in trouble. Excuse me, a very present help in trouble. All right? He is there. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be moved, and though the mountains be carried into the sea, though the, though, though the waters roar and the and be troubled, though the mountains shake with swelling, there is a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God. Oh, Steve, I, I like that song, I've got peace like a river. i got joy like a river. I've got love like a fountain. Folks, God is with us. There is a river whose streams shall make us glad in the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, and she shall not be removed, not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. You know what God allows us to do sometimes? Sometimes God allows us to get right on the edge, and we think we're going over and right. It's kind of like, remember the old cowboy and Indian movies? And when the fort, the, the troops come out of the fort, and man, them Indians... Oh, Native Americans, don't want to be wrong here, but they have the, the white men pinned down. And what do you hear? And here comes the R. I, I mean, did anybody else watch it? Can I get an amen on that? What happened every time? Those Indians just take off running. Folks, that's the way God is. Sometimes, and, and I'll tell you why he lets us do that. Because too many times we're making our own decisions and God is just sitting up there, okay, you want to run your life? I'm going to let you run your life. All right? But you know what he does? He doesn't let us fall over the edge, folks. He is there. He is our help. Verse 5, God is in the midst of her. God shall help her. The nations raged and the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice and the earth melt. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge, our refuge and strength. So we see God's purpose, we see God's protection, and we see God's power. See God's power. Look at verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? And here's the deal, folks. On security of the believer, I believe that a God who saves us, who protects us, can keep us also, all right? And it's not a thing of feeling saved, all right? There's, you know, there's too many people that live on feelings. When it comes to salvation, we're talking about faith, not feelings, okay? And again, I'm, you know, I mean, in the altar and church, you know, wherever, sometimes in the pulpit, you know, 
you know, these, these things, you know, I, I get emotional. But that's not what I'm living on the emotion. When I think about what God has done for me, and I think of where God's brought me from and protected me, in what I call my dumb days, anybody have some dumb days? It was, it's for college for me. We were out one, one time in a Jeep. We all had shotguns, and we were chasing rabbits south of Lawton on a dirt road. And we rolled that Jeep. The guns in the Jeep, we rolled it, and we all walked away from it. Now, who do you think protected us? Folks, it was God. Like I said, I have dumb days. I call them BC days before Christ. God protects us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or the peril of sword? Can they separate us? For your sake we are killed all the day long and we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. And folks, Satan, he would love to, uh, you know, chew you up and spit you out. Satan would kill you if he had the choice, if he would. Temptation is always going to be there. There's doubt. I understand doubting Thomas. Okay, I understand that. But I'm simply saying all that God has brought you through should give you confidence in Christ Jesus. All that God has brought you through. It says, yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors. <laughs> I, get, I just laugh at some Christians sometimes. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing okay. How you doing? Oh, I'm, I'm treading water. How you doing? Well, I've been better. Now, if I was a lost person, I'd say, I'm not sure I want what you got. I'm serious, folks. I believe with all my heart, Christians should be the most confident. I did not say arrogant. The most confident in the happiest, joyful, most joyful people on the face of this earth. Folks, I'm just telling you, all this, I mean, we're sitting in an air-conditioned building. I don't know what the thermostat's on. I'm guessing somewhere between 70 and 71 degrees. We're not outside having church, folks. We're not hiding Bibles. We're not in an underground church. We are blessed, and we are more than conquerors. Man, I think of Joshua. Man, that angel snuck up on him and scared him. All right? What did he do? He pulled his sword and he just said, hey, you for us or are you against us? He was going to throw down right there. All right? We are more than conquerors. Folks, there is nothing in your life. Listen to me. There's nothing in your life you can overcome without, that, that you can't overcome. You can overcome anything with God's help. See, I always emphasize this. I can do all things. Well, if you stop there, that's not a true statement. You're not going to see me in a ballerina outfit on stage doing the nutcracker. I can't do that. Does this body, it's like, does this body look like a runner? Have you noticed what runners look like? Well, you can look right over there and feel he, he's one. They're skinny, just skinny guys. And, and, in, in, and in sports, those track guys, I'm, I look at them and they're just going round and round and round and round. All right? I'll never be, I mean, I guess I could train. Matter of fact, one time I did train for a marathon. I got up to 10 miles four days a week. Matter of fact, my associate pastor was encouraging me to do that. And finally, we were out running one time and I felt some sharp pain in my foot. And a nail went through my running shoe. And when I took it off, I'm talking blood was there. I pulled that knife out. I said, his name's Mike Till, and I'll see him next week. I said, Mike Till, that is a sign from God. You're not a runner. <laughs> All right. But here's the deal, folks. You got to finish that first. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Man, I've seen folks that said this. I don't know how I did it. The spouse was in the hospital for two months. Someone's house burned to the ground. 
something bad has happened. And they'll just say, I don't know how I did it, but God got me through it. Folks, that's, that's the God that we serve. We are more than conquerors through him who loves us. For I am persuaded, and this is once saved, always saved. But you know what? I, I like to throw this word in, once saved, truly saved. There are false professions of faith according to the word of God. There's false professions of faith. But I'm telling you, once saved, truly saved, always saved. For I'm persuaded neither death nor life. Notice the first thing he said in this list was death. Nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Do you see that list? Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Why? Because God He's just not, he, he doesn't just have might. He has might, but he is almighty. There's nothing stronger than God. There's no power, and I, I love to use this illustration when you get saved, okay? Uh, uh, God takes his hand and he calls you to salvation, and Jesus comes and he puts his hand around you, and then the Holy Spirit is circled. That is the seal of the Holy Spirit. And to get to you, they have to break the power of the Holy Spirit. They have to take the hand of Jesus off and take the hand of God off to get to you. Now, do you know one thing that has the power to do that? Folks, nothing. Nothing. And I know there are people that believe that you, they believe you can send away salvation. But folks, what do they do with this verse? What do they, what do, they do with this verse? And not only that, uh, look at John chapter 10. John 10, verse 27. John 10, 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Folks, I'm telling you, I've read this, and I've seen it, I've seen it happen when it comes to sheep, especially in the biblical times, they had a pen right in the middle of town, okay? And when nighttime came, all these shepherds would put their sheep together in that pen. And the shepherds, where the, where the gates were, they would sleep. They would literally put their cot across where those gates are, and they would protect uh, those sheep uh, through the night. And then when they got up the next morning, when they were ready to go, all they had to do was just start talking. Here's sheep. Here's sheep. And a lot of them, I read, they, they even named their sheep. Here, John. Here, Betty. Here. Come with me. And when he started out, those sheep that knew his voice would go with him. And folks, I am telling you, if you are saved, you are going to follow Jesus. I did not say you'd be perfect. But he knows you, and you know his voice. Verse 28, and I give them eternal life. What's eternal? Forever and ever and ever. This ain't a one-time deal. This is not a per performance-based re relationship. When you get saved, man, you are saved for eternity. My Bible says your name was written down in the Lamb's book of life. It says, and they shall never perish. Don't you like that word, never? I mean, you may die. I mean, <laughs> you may die. <laughs> you, we're all going to die if the Lord tarries. But we'll never perish. We'll never have the fear of dying. Never should have the fear of dying and going to hell if you are a Christian. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my Father's hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. <laughs> Remember when you was a kid? My daddy could beat your daddy up. <laughs> Don't tell me you didn't say that sometime. Neighborhood kid that was just kind of mean. All right? Well, I got news for you folks. My Father, my Heavenly Father, can take care of any opponent, anybody, 
God is powerful. He is greater than all, and no one, can we give an answer to that? No one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Folks, God's love, I'm just telling you, it's amazing. God's love is unconditional. God's love is forever, folks. Forever and ever. And I want to ask you, what are you afraid of? Okay, just be, be honest with God. Tonight, is there something you're afraid of? Folks, would you just give that to God? Would you give it to God? And I wrote this down this morning when I was studying. No fear equals no worries. Would you write that down on your paper? No fear equals no worries. Folks, we worry way too much about things. And I saw this stat and I still quote it. And I, I mean, it's been years ago that I've seen this. 72% of the things we worry about never come true. So why are, we wor- why are we worrying as a Christian anyway? We shouldn't. Father, thank you for the night, and God, thank you for your word. God, it's so encouraging to know that you have a purpose in everything that you do. I may not understand it now, but I truly believe with all my heart when we get to heaven, it's not going to matter. God, I truly believe you're going you're gonna to erase those bad things that happened in our lives. And God, I thank you for your protection. Lord, whether we're in a car, whether we're walking, whether we're, you know, just wherever we're at, whatever we're doing, we're under the divine protection of God. Thank you for your angels and their protection. Thank you for us having guardian angels. And God, I thank you for your power. God, your power is strong. I thank you for your Holy Spirit. It's strong. I thank you that it's strong in our church. And God, just thank you for Sunday. Uh, Lord, uh, just uh, seeing the baptismal water move, seeing the profession of faith. God, just seeing you work in the life of our people. So God, I pray that we wouldn't fear anything. God, I pray that we would just turn everything over to you. And your word says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Folks, help us to do that. God, you are our great shepherd. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And God, I thank you that one day we're going to your house and we're going to spend all of eternity with you. So God, thank you for the blessings that you send our ways. And God, I pray that we would just quit worrying about stuff. We'd turn it over to you. And God, I know you will help us with that. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen.